Hi guys, I think I should probably start. Um, yeah, it's great to be here at CSDCon, having a great time. Um, I was really enjoying it until yesterday afternoon when John Shadaki came and said, Do you want to give a talk tomorrow morning? Yeah, he's not even here. Um, so I thought, I'm working on a project. Um, I was expecting to do a talk in maybe a month or something, maybe write a blog post in the future. Um, I'm literally in the middle of doing it, and he said, Do you want to give this talk? So I just got 20 minutes, I know what I'm doing. So, um, sorry. Yeah, so he said, Do you want to give this talk? And I'm not entirely raising all the data, but I thought, fuck it, we'll do it live. So this is the middle of the project, um, but there's some really cool stuff. So uh, I'm sorry for all the bullet points, it's easier than writing notes myself. I wrote this all last night. So I work at Crossref. We were set up in 2000. We provide a system identifier for scholarly publishing, mostly articles. Raise your hand if you don't know what a DOI is. Cool. So a DOI is a system identifier, it means the identifier won't change. It's for a scholarly work or an article. And the idea is that DOI is a link, and you can click on the link and you can get to the landing page of the, of the article. And if the landing page of the article changes, the DOI can be updated to point there. So they're the best way to cite articles. Uh, we have great metadata for scholarly works. We have 80 million of them, and we have about 5,000 members, which are mostly publishers, which put the data in. Data Cycle was once in conference, also the DOI to the data sets. So, this is Wikipedia, it's the reference section of a Wikipedia article. You can see fairly traditional citation, but also we see some DOIs. So, Wikipedia cites all over the web. Um, there are lots of scholarly article citations, and there's a big push within Wikipedia to use these, um, to use DOIs for citations, and it's really cool to see them there. And at Crossref, we knew that they were being used, but we thought we'd like to find out a bit more. Um, so, Crossref was founded in 2000, and Wikipedia was founded in 2001. They're about the same age. Um, but some publishers who are members of Crossref have been around for hundreds of years. This DOI was published in 1672. It's our job to keep track of all the traditional citations between papers, but things have changed a lot in publishing since 1672. This is Isaac Newton, and this is a DOI. So, um, there's this drive to track forms of non-traditional scholarship and how citations work. And this field is called Lot Metrics, or Alternative Metrics, or Article Level Metrics, or ALMs. And it's uh, an idea about trying to create metrics <coughs> on things other than traditional citations. And looking at how articles are used in the real world. Surely we're not creating another metric? No, Crossref isn't doing that, but it's interesting to know exactly what is going on in the wild. So we have this project called Crossref for Better Data. It's a partnership with DataCite for sponsoring the conference. It's an early minimal viable product stage, and um, we're just kind of feeling our way. And we're basically concerned with tracking things that happen to our DOIs out in the wild, because no one ever tells us anything. Our DOIs never call home. If people use them in Wikipedia or in a blog or in Twitter or Facebook, no one tells us. Um, we want to change that one way or the other. So, what happens on Wikipedia is people make citations, including those with DOIs. But what happens on Wikipedia doesn't always stay on Wikipedia. Here is an edit to an existing article where this DOI has been added, so the article changed. Here is some spam. Um, all of this stuff was removed in this div, and then this review. I've been using Minidoxil hair loss shampoo for two months, now I can clearly see hair growth. So, the DOI was removed in this edit. So, uh, Oh yeah, and another one, this is about urination, the DOI was changed because there might have been a typo. So, um, we thought we're going to investigate, we're going to see what happens on Wikipedia. So, Wikipedia publishes, we publishes a recent changes screen. So every single edit that happens anywhere on Wikipedia comes in this uh, pipe, and we subscribe to that. And there's up to 100 changes per, uh, per second, sometimes. Um, and for every single letter made to any article, um, we go back to the Wikipedia REST base API and we fetch the old and the new version, and we look at the DOIs in the old and new version, and we say which DOIs were added and which ones were removed. And then we pass this data on to you for whatever processing you want to do. So this is the live event screen which I put up earlier. Um, it monitors every single change, and 
we get a um, yeah, so we get an event um, concerning a DOI every couple of minutes. So there's this fairly constant DOI activity citation activity happening on Wikipedia. So from this experiment, we knew that Wikipedia is important for DOI citations, and we need to pay really close attention to what's happening on Wikipedia because this is a brand new way things are happening. It might be 15 years old and it's kind of getting into its right now. Um, we know that citations come and go, unlike scholarly publishing. Traditionally, um, traditionally a citation existed and that would never change. Now an article can have references added and removed. So we know that DOIs are being used in Wikipedia, but do people actually use them? Do people actually click on the DOIs? This is an interesting problem. So, big data. I think everybody in this room would like to have a big data problem. It's a really cool thing. Everybody would jump at the opportunity to use big data. And we have some data, the DOI resolution logs. So when you click on a DOI, yeah, sorry, we have the DOI resolution logs, which is about 1.5 terabytes for about five years, which is a large-ish amount of data. So every time a DOI is clicked by a human or by a machine or by something else, however that, however that happens, we get an entry in the log file. So it's not necessarily human activity, but it is some kind of use of the DOI. So we know how DOIs are being used by machines or humans or whatever. Um, yeah, um, there are, there are, I've written lots of blog posts. Um, so here's an example of uh, the log files we get. We have the IP address, some status codes to date, a couple more status codes, the DOI, another status code, and then we have this referrer screen. So this is uh, Illinois University, this is from NMN, NIH, OECD, the org. And the referrer screen happens when a browser, in a browser, you click on a link and uh, the place you're going to, the browser sends the previous URL to that new place. So that's how Google tracking happens. So we know where people were when they clicked the DOI if the browser sends that information. And that's obviously not sent for robots or whatever. So I thought we could do some analysis on this. Mm -hmm. So we can gather stats for how the DOIs are used, on what date, if the referrer is present, if it's HTTP or HTTPS. But crucially, I was going to remove the IP address and the precise referrer URL and the precise time, because those are personal information. And Zara gave a great talk yesterday about how important it is to make sure you think really carefully about how you do this kind of data. So Apache Spark cropped up. I thought, I've got a lot of data, 1.5 terabytes. I'm going to use a big data tool. It's like MapReduce, but a lot more flexible than that. There's a graph of transformations that happen that you specify. Your input data goes through all these processes and then comes out the other end. It has some very clever algorithms for partitioning the data. So you put your data into a cluster and it split it into different partitions on different servers um, in the cluster and then it'll try and keep the data local to each node. Um, so here's an example from what I was doing. Um, you have log files coming in the top and there's a map stage, which will parse each line into a triple of DOI, refer a domain and date. Um, and then that might get mapped into DOI year, month, day. And then that might get counted. So in the end, you get, for every DOI, year, month, day, count. So that tells us uh, how many times each DOI is visited every day. And the cool thing is, it kind of caches between each, each stage. So there's a few pipelines and Spark figures out the most efficient way to get your data through. And it ended up in some database. Um, here's an example of more realistic of the kind of stuff I was doing. So you have a few parallel processes, but they kind of share um, some of the half-process data. And Spark is really, really good for this. It's magic, because I can write my code in Scala or Clojure, um, and I can run it on my laptop for a very small data set. And it works, and I can iterate, and I can refine what I'm writing. And then I can magically scale it up to a multi-node distribution in the cloud, and suddenly I'm doing big data, it's very exciting. And it runs 12 hours, and sometimes it would fail during that time. Or the heat would explode after a few hours, and I'd get up in the morning and found find something gets gone wrong. Or one by one, the nodes in the cluster would die, so the last node was 
and you've got doing all the processing. And fetching 10 gigabytes of data from S3 into EC2 is still quite slow and unzipping that much is still quite painful. EC2 is really cheap, but if you keep failing after 12 hours with a cluster of 10 machines, it gets expensive. But it got the results, I got the numbers out, and I was really pleased. So this is a year ago. Um, I got the stats of the DOIs and the referral domains. It showed that Wikipedia was roughly the fifth largest non-traditional referral DOI. And uh, this is the DOI chronograph as of a year ago. And it's a way of exploring the data that I derived from our resolution logs. So for Wikipedia, for example, this is per day, and you can see weekly spikes. You can see around Christmas it kind of dips a bit. Um, but you see kind of healthy activity people or machines or something are clicking the DOIs, and they're probably humans because there's a referral screen, so it's probably a browser. Um, and we see some activity. And that's, that was really cool. We knew people were clicking on DOIs from Wikipedia. Um, that's 18,000 per day, for example. You know, a healthy amount of, of, of traffic. And then this refines the sub-domain, sub the English Wikipedia, similar patterns. But then looking at the English mobile Wikipedia, you can see over time use of that kind of rockets up. So that's quite interesting data. First of all, about first of all, how people are using the mobile site, secondly, how people are doing scholarship with the mobile site. And this data is really useful to us because we know we should concentrate on Wikipedia for Wikipedia because they know people are using it for scholarship. Um, everybody's interested in this data, and it's very cool. And then something interesting happened. Um, I was talking to Dario Tamarelli, who's head of research for the media, and uh, we were kind of talking through a few things and realised Wikipedia is trying to move to HTTPS, and um, there are some ramifications of this. So there's an interesting twist, and we have this discussion online. It's fascinating having a discussion in Wikipedia because everything is public. Um, you can't, you can even send a private email, but the, the discussion of everything is all done in the open. And it's quite interesting to participate in that kind of conversation. So, um, stuff happened. Uh, the Russian government started getting interested in blocking stuff, especially with the Ukraine, uh, all kicking off. Um, the, the Russian Wikipedia enabled HTTPS only for a certain time, um, Snowden revelations, and there was a gradual change within Wikipedia to HTTPS only. And the catch is, if you go from an HTTPS site to an HTTP site, the browser does not send a referral <coughs> script. So that means we could lose all of our data. Suddenly it evaporates. Um, and this data which is useful to us and Wikipedia and researchers and bibliometricians would just, would just go away. DOI does support HTTPS, but only if you put the HTTPS link. Um, so there was this change within Wikipedia to change all DOI links to protocol relative, which means if you're on HTTP, the DOI is HTTP. If you're on HTTPS, it's HTTPS. Um, so we collaborated with them to kind of get that done and check everything was working. Um, because the data is valuable to everyone, our sound lab and researchers. So they made this change, they slowly phased it in, and it's time, a year later, after the original chronograph stuff, for some reanalysis. So, questions I wanted to answer more were, um, did the change in referral policy change the referral data that we get, that we see? Are we even seeing any data? Can we actually see what's happening with the change to HTTPS? Um, did all the URLs actually change? They might have missed some out. Are people and machines still following the links? Um, all data, all questions I wanted to answer. And so I was looking at this data and I thought I need a moment of honest reflection here. Um, am I doing real big data? Big data is a term of data set that's so large or complex that traditional processing applications are inadequate, according to Wikipedia. 1.5 terabytes is a lot of data. To, to, to crunch on a laptop. So I thought an Apache Spark, it did the job, it was fine. But I thought I just learned some lessons from Spark's architecture and just try and do it myself a bit more simply and just see if that worked. So I wrote this thing in plain old Java. It's a process that runs overnight for about a year's worth of data, handles a few millions of lines. Is this big data? No, because it runs on my laptop. So the approach I'm taking is, I don't know if you can see the colours, but I'm partitioning the data into a, few, in, into a few partitions and I'm taking a hash of the thing I'm interested in, like the domain, 
putting it into this many buckets, 20 or so buckets, then I'm running over the data 20 times, and each time I'm only looking at one bucket's worth of stuff. Um, so I partition it, and then I have this map with the partitions all, all one after the other, and then I kind of merge it with this purple colour. And if this looks a bit like MapReduce, it is, obviously it's the same thing, except I'm doing partitions one at once, I'm not trying to spread them out in massive uh, parallel, I'm just doing one partition and the next one and the next one. <coughs> and because, um, uh, because it runs overnight on my laptop, there's no need to parallelize. Um, so I'm partitioning the data, so the, uh, so the partitions are big enough to fit in be meaningful, but so small they fit in RAM, like 4 gigabytes each time. Um, the expense of parsing, which takes overnight, happens only once. I'm using plain old CSV files. I'm reading to and from GZIP so I can store all the data on my disk, and I don't mind running a few hours uh, once a month. So here's an intermediary file, here's some CSV. Um, I, I do belong here. <coughs> so on my laptop, I'm parsing, normalizing 50 months worth of data. Um, it was able to handle about a million lines every few seconds, which I thought was okay. Um, for a year, 15 months, uh, 100 gigabytes input, um, which is about 500 gigabytes of uncompressed input data. Uh, the output was about 43 gigs. Um, so the input was uh, 4,000 million lines, uh, which is 0.004 billion lines if you're British, or 4 billion if you're American, or if you're European, you can choose uh, which one you want. So here is the data for all DOIs. Um, this is the analysis I ran last night, so the data is quite fresh. I don't know what's going on here. Um, maybe it was spiders, who knows. But this yellow line is all DOI resolution activity. And it's quite spiky, and you can tell there's obviously something going on. Who knows what that is. This little red line here is where we know it was referred from HTTP. Um, and you see the weekly spikes, and you see HTTP <coughs> Kind of going along nicely, and this blue thing at the bottom is HTTPS. So I'm just going to remove the yellow line so we can compare them. And so um, HTTP, um, you get a fair amount of referrals from there, but a small kind of growing amount of HTTPS activity over the course of 2015. So HTTPS referrals are happening. Um, so it's really good to see there are a, uh, there are HTTPS DOIs out there because people are clicking on them. Now for the big reveal, to answer all the questions that Wikipedia had. Yes, um, I, it was amazing to see this at midnight last night. I got the numbers through. You see, uh, started 2015, this is referrals from Wikipedia via HTTP, kind of normal, and then towards the end of 2015 they tail off as, a, as Wikipedia enable HTTPS only, and then the HTTPS referrals kind of come up. So um, we can see the switch over work. So um, the changeover to HTTPS did, did work. Um, the changeover appears to have applied to most, if not all, DOIs, because we have that volume of data, uh, the same volume of data we have. And the less my learning was not all large data, even if it doesn't fit in RAM, it's big data. It's a good idea just to try and use normal techniques for big ones. And I'm going to blog all this in a few weeks on the Crossref blog. Check it out. Um, there's the URL for event data. Uh, it's a new project, and there's lots of different kinds of data going into that. And you should go and take a look. Um, follow me on Twitter, and I'm one minute ahead of schedule. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, yeah, so uh, you're just getting the changes from the stream, so you don't know, for example, how many DOIs are in Wikipedia that aren't, aren't being so they're not subject to change? That's an interesting question. So, I mean, the how data. Need to, I just want to understand. Yeah, that. yeah. So, the data I'm fetching is a snapshot of the old and the new one. Yeah. What, I'm, what I'm doing is getting a diff. If I wanted to, I could get, you know, compile a list of every single DOI in Wikipedia. That's something we could do. Um, for that particular project, we were interested in how they were added and removed. Um, so yes, I could, if I wanted to, store every, every DOI I ever see, and you'd see probably the same ones again and again and again and again. 
because most of them they don't get that um, Yeah. And there is, you know, in future, I could try and correlate the DOIs that we see being added to Wikipedia against what you get referred. Um, there's a, a kind of a two month lag between DOI logs getting generated and us getting them. So um, that would be kind of a long term project. Why do you have that lag? Uh, because they're traditional server logs and there's a sysadmin who has to send them to us. Gotcha. Um, so, Marvin, well, why wouldn't you run some sort of uh, logging service that can do all this for you in real time, like something like Kafka or something, given that you, this is yeah. the coolest thing you want to know if people are actually clicking through DOIs or, or yeah. something else clicking through DOIs? So, the answer is that DOIs um, are a subs subset of the handle functionality and uh, handle is a server it's a technology for resolving links um, so um, the DOI system runs on the handle system and it's a standard bit of software called the handle resolver um, and um, CNRI run that, is that correct? Yep. We don't run that we give them money to run it yep. there's other, so there's a, there's a server, handle server resolving DOIs and that doesn't belong to us so it can have cross-ref DOIs or data set DOIs. Um, so we can't we can't suddenly change that software. Right. But I think one of the things we're trying to do is build enough ammunition to make the case to CNRI that they should modify the handle server to support that kind of reporting um, because it's becoming increasingly important for people. The other thing that they do, incidentally, is that of course we don't get data sites uh, log files. So they you know they have to split these things up and and they give, deliver them to us once a month. But yes, it would be better to get these things live, and I, I hope that by doing this kind of stuff and showing that it's really valuable for our members, that then we can make the case that they'll make those changes. Yeah, I'll answer another question about who handles all of this, including you not doing the sort of the DevOps on the main server side. No, yeah. I get, so I get them sent to me by Alice is having you get them sent to me by this is happening, so right. yeah. there's no kind of automatic yeah. That's probably doing. Okay. Uh, if you look into, I guess, like what the most popular like citations are, just like, patterns and like what's getting clicked a lot from the Uh Yes. I. So in the previous version of Chromegraph, I was recording referrals from a domain to a DOI. Um, I've not ranked those yet, but I could. That would be possible. Um, like I said, I'm halfway through building a new one. Um, that would be interesting, yeah. But it also highlights something interesting, right? Which is you said, which are the most popular citations. So the fact that something's cited often doesn't necessarily mean it's clicked on often, mm -hmm. right? And one of the things we're actually able to do is, is show how often the things fall, you know, like actually follow, as well as how often it's cited. Is there something like um, author and pattern that would allow you to track all the papers that I've written, get all the uh, DOIs and them? Check where they are cited in the or Yeah, so um, do you know about Orchid? ORC ID. So Orchid is, is the author identify system that we should have. Uh, yeah, so um, cross ref metadata is provided by publishers. So when you write an article, uh, the publisher collects the Orchid IDs and it will deposit it in the cross ref metadata. So there is a link. If the publisher, and there are 5,000, People, the organizations putting data into Crossref. Um, so that link, it is possible to make that link. And also within the audience system, it's possible to say within your profile, um, I wrote these papers for these DOIs. Um, but as for kind of a broader connection of those things, um, Crossref data is only from, from publishers. But this event data thing is a initiative from Crossref to collect as much data like this as possible and then to make it available for free. So people can build exciting applications. Um, so you know when this is up and running, I'm sure um, someone like you, I don't know, someone in this conference could take the stream of event data um, from Wikipedia. Uh, they could then go to our metadata API and fetch the DOIs. They could go to the ORCID API and get ORCID data and they could somehow combine them and then they could do what you're saying. So um, 
for event data we're interested in uh, collecting the raw data and then making that available. Um, we're not interested in, for example, altmetric.com created this donut which says uh, the papers that I wrote or this DOI you know, has this much activity on Facebook and Twitter and whatever. But we're not interested in creating a metric or some kind of analysis. We're just interested in collecting the raw data. So uh, hopefully when that data is kind of broadly available to everyone, um, somebody can come in and make that talk. Just real quick, what happened in those two Januarys where there were actually no data at all? Um, uh, I, I think there was an error process in the logs, or they went missing. Yeah, it there's could have absolutely been... nothing for like... Yeah, so that's a good question. And the answer is, I started this last year, which was 2015. Where is it? Uh, was before that? Yeah, um, 2015. So right, right, I could right. ask the I, could, I asked my sysadmin for all the log files, and he said, "Oh, I've not kept." We didn't realise how important they were. You know, we were doing some analysis for publishers to say to publishers, "Oh, you know, your DOI has been used this much." But as for this kind of thing, we didn't really think about it until last year. So he. Went back and got the files from tape storage, went back to the sysadmin and the CNRI, um, and went back to 2010. But I think maybe some log files were just missing. Um, I'm not, yeah.